exactly. <laughs> so, oh shit. Let's let's talk about my man Kevin. Hart. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Let's talk real that. quick. He's got a new docu series coming out. It's a documentary type series on his life where they really go in depth about all of his controversial things like the car accident, the cheating scandal that he was in, all of that. Um, so it's going to be a series. It's not going to be one long movie. It's going to be a series. So we're going to call it the docu series, and it's going to be on Netflix uh, pretty soon. I want to say they might have said January, but I'm not 100%. But it's coming soon, so I'm very excited because I like Kevin Hart. I think he's a very genuine person, and he tries to be as transparent about his life as possible. So I don't think he wants to hide anything. So you know, and I think that's smart. Before people can talk about me, let me go ahead and put put it out there. So you let me set the record straight ahead of time. I feel too that he's like even the position he is, he's in. I feel that, yeah, like you said, he's very genuine. He he's really got. Um, I, I like the fact that he um, really he has some principles. Yeah, he slipped and fall, but I feel that he is a man of principle. Yeah, he when it comes when it comes to certain things, I mean, at least like when he does his interviews, I mean, he like cut up and laugh and have jokes and stuff. Yeah. But he's really like a like look, you know, this is what I do. Yeah, this is how I do it. You know, I understand that in order to do, where I, you know, to get where I am, I have to do this. Yeah. And it just, I mean, he just, to me, whether you think he's funny or not, he's just an inspiration, you know, for me as far as like, hey, man, you know, this is what, this is what you got to do. This is, even though I might be a little man, I'm a man and I'm out here trying to get, get this. Yeah. You know, and I, I can respect that. Shout out to Kev, man. Shout Shit. out to Kev, man. Right. They gotta get them phone books to get it. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I'm I'm definitely excited about it because I, I think it's gonna be a good series for him. Um, that was something else I was about to say and I forgot what it was, but um, if I remember it, I'll come back to it. But he he definitely. Um, oh, I know what I was gonna say. As far as his little cheating scandal, you know, I'm not trying to say he, you know, he he wasn't wrong for that. He was definitely wrong, but I gotta get it. Because a lot of stuff that he talks about in his comedy, about being short and being, you know, not the most popular guy, you can tell that that's a real true part of his life. And so when you finally get famous and got all this money, all of a sudden it's thrown at you. You know what I mean? Like, like, Like quarterback thrown at you, you know. And so it's hard to turn it down when it's everywhere. Eddie Murphy, but yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Right. I was it. I'm right. I appreciate that. So, you yeah. know, not 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 trying to validate it or justify it. I'm just saying I see that it would be hard to, to escape something like that, you know. So you have to really be careful. You know what I mean? If I was famous on the road, my wife coming with me every damn way because uh that's the only shield. <laughs> hey, my wife right there. Yeah, right. Look, 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 look. right. My hands up here. Right. Up right. Here. Oh, you want pictures? You want a right. picture? My hands right. up here. My hands up here. Right. Don't shoot. Don't yeah, confuse. No. No, anti anti me. I mean, not well, not anti me too, but no no me too. No right. Me. Right. We don't need no yeah, more you hashtags. Can't be, you can't be up here like oh. Well, how he raped me? Right, my hands are right. up here. You see the picture? How he sat? Right. Came over here to my booth. <laughs> How his little fat came out of my boot and right. He rubbed it. He rubbed it with his fat. What's I ain't that? Okay, he ain't even controlling that. Like, I got my hands up. Fat is big. He clutched at me. He clutched at me. He, he flexed a little bit. He flexed a little bit. He tried to tackle me. So, mentally, he, he, he touched me. I could tell in his mind, he was Bitch, thinking about it. I don't feel it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we don't want no more of them. No. So, um, but yeah, so you know, it's one of them things, man. So I'm just saying, I'm sure it was very hard, you know, when he's becoming that popular to, you know, avoid it. So, you know, when you when you've been through that kind of life where for the most part nobody don't want you, then all of a sudden everybody wants you. Yep. You know what I mean? So but um we're gonna move on to our last topic. Um we want to talk about the recent shooting in New Jersey 
that they are linking, saying that it was linked to uh, the two people who are supposedly involved in the black Hebrew Israelites. Well, the Hebrew Israelites, but they're, they're, they're branding it as a black Hebrew Israelite thing. So, you know, they got to throw the black thing on there to try to make sure you know, you know what I mean? This yeah. is what you think you need to think about when you think Negros. about the Hebrew Israelites. Negroes. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's a sad thing because, you know... Oh, thank you. My bad. They basically, you know, these individuals shot up a, um, a Jewish business, so it turns into Bingo. more of a... Yeah, it turns into more of a hate crime anti-Semitism type yeah, of anti-Semitic, deal. Yeah, yeah so um, I don't know. I don't know the whole story, but I know that the two individuals, um, I think they said at least one of them was tied to the Hebrew Israelites, and so that I think they're trying to say both of them because of that must have been tied to them, and that they hate everybody, so they must be trying to kill people like the Jewish people because they hate everybody. But didn't the, but the thing that is, there was holes in that story. Like one, the cop was set up. One, of the cop was set up next next to the cemetery or some shit. Okay. And the so other yeah, one you was schooling me. Cause I, yeah, I, like it was. I mean, this is stuff that I heard. Now I'm not. I'm, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But there was just like so many holes in the damn story. Right. But um, what my my thing is, is whether you believe that you know what they believe or not, whether you subscribe to what we believe or not. The scary thing is, we as black people, we are definitely now being targeted. Now, if we, if we weren't being targeted before, we are definitely being targeted now. Yeah. So, like, this is this is really uh, a grave situation because, I mean, now, I mean, they can walk up to me or Kurt and they'd be like, and we may not even be down with right. you those black Hebrew Israelites. Right. Ah, man, like Goku and Piccolo and right. <laughs> You got a beard. You one of them Muslims. <laughs> you know anything, anything, uh-huh. anything to link you to something. You know what I mean. Yep. So yep. it's it's always something. You know what I mean. Yeah. So um, I yeah. mean, you know, I'm, I ain't scared of nothing like that. I yeah. mean, I, you know, I I feel the Most High got me no matter what. But at the same time, you have to warn your people and you gotta inform your people. Like, hey, man, like you, right. you can't play around with this. Like they really, they really out here trying to, you know. Target practice, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and we're not justifying what anybody did as far as shooting, you know what I mean? But we're just saying that because of this recent shooting, it, you know, they're, they're making it more of a black thing than a, anything else, you know what I mean? So it's a lot of black this and black that. So, you know, it kind of makes it, it's one of those things that starts to put other races like white people more in fear of black people, you know, like, oh, 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 the Hebrew Israelites are all black and they all hate everybody, so, yeah. you know. And not all of them, and you know, for what, you know, for what I understand, not all of them are like that. Yeah. Just like not all Muslims are, you know, terrorists. Right. Like, not all Christians are good. Right. Like, you know what I mean? So, and this thing, my thing is this, I don't know the whole story, but this could have been based on some beef that they had with the, the store or this Jewish person that owned the store, it may not have nothing to do with the black, the Hebrew Israelite thing. It could have just been on a personal level, like maybe every time they go into his business, he might be talking shit to them. Yeah. You niggas, get your ass out of here. Oh, oh, my niggas? Okay. Let's go. We're going to come back. You know what I mean? It could have been some crazy shit like that, but they were just mad because they tried, tired of being, mis- being mistreated. We don't know. It may not have anything to do with their their affiliation with the Israelites. You know what I mean? So we don't know. But <clears throat> typically, that's what happens. And if y'all don't know how we did a lost in thought about this, so y'all may want to go check that out because he really uh, wants to get a conversation going so we can get your opinion on that. But yeah, my thing is whenever, a lot of times whenever it's, black people that commit a crime it's always some kind of connection like if you remember the dc sniper yeah they started saying oh well his name is muhammad he must be muslim so it's a muslim thing had nothing to do with islam no you know what i mean nothing i ain't gonna lie when that shit first happened you know what i thought yeah this is a motherfucking white dude killed these yeah i did too i did too and then when i found out that she was right I'm like Patrick right. O'Tree's recipe. Right. I mean, I was like, man, I don't know whether it's been, you know, appalled or offended. Right. Exactly. 
<laughs> exactly. So you know, but that's that's what they do. If you notice, a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times, when it comes to white criminals, they don't really tell you about their background. Oh, you know, they don't say he was a Christian. Uh, you know, they don't say um, Christian killer Timothy. Yeah, McVeigh, Christian. Yeah, Christian he grew up the, You know, trade that's center. Yeah. You know, you don't really hear their affiliation with other organizations or religion. It's just this guy did this bad thing. Yeah. So when it says, why does it got to be pointed out that we were part of an organization? We were Muslim. Right. We were this. And so, then, like, they ain't going to, like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, they ain't. For all you know, I could have been, I could be a Christian eating pork, screwing white women. Right. I do a crime. Oh, he was one of those. Right. He was one of those Muslim guys. Exactly. He's a beard. Right. You know what I mean? So it's it's ridiculous, man. So watch out for yourselves, man. People of color, watch out for yourselves. Yes, yes. They're looking for you to slip up any second so that they can do something to brand you. You know what I mean? I have I have something on my criminal record right now for something that I ain't even do. You know what I mean? And it's it ain't going away. You know what I mean? I'm not. I ain't got no money to be paying a, a lawyer a gazillion dollars just to get it erased or expunged or whatever. But you see, know what I mean, but even if it's expunged, it's still there. They just black it out. Basically. Yeah, but see, that's and that's the thing. And you know, they try anything they can do to keep you down. That's what they're trying to do. They've been doing that ever since we've been on the planet. Right. I mean, and they they trying. They trying. Mm-hmm. And, but you know, I'm gonna say this too. I mean, you know, like you said, just be careful out here. Black man, we need you. Latin man, we need you. Uh, Polynesian Island people, we need yes, sir. Yes, you. You know, sir. Philippines, we need you. All people of color, we need you. We yeah, need man. you. We need you here. You know, some of the white allies, white allies, we, we, definitely, we definitely need y'all. Need y'all. We definitely need y'all. Yeah, y'all, you know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just, we just being real. You yeah. know, we need y'all because y'all need help y'all, stand man. up for us when we yeah. can't. Sometimes we can't. Yeah. We need those people like y'all to represent. And we quit um, fighting amongst each other, man. Yeah. Like, we really, you know, um, shout out the moral technique. I was just thinking about that best. Like, we're missing out opportunity right now. We got there fighting over this position of being a little boat, and we can own the whole fucking ocean. Right. We just fight for this little bit of, you know, we need to link up and do like the warriors, son. Right. right. One gang can rule <laughs> this country. One gang. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Look up, be like the warriors. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> but you know, just being real, you know, watch your back, you know, because anything can happen. You know what I mean? The the thing that's on my record, fill out an application for a job. Dang. And next thing I know, I'm being approached by cops. You know what I mean? Over that, and I'm like, okay, so what? What's going on now? <laughs> I mean, and I was, uh, I was like 19 or 20. You yeah. know what I mean? So I was just coming into my manhood trying to get my life started. Yeah. And uh hadn't even moved out of my parents' house yet. I was like 19. I was just about to move out. And um me and a friend of mine, you know, we we trying to get our manhood on. So we like, let's go find some jobs so we can get yeah. our own places yeah, and all that. Yeah, everything. Yeah, we go to this little business and there's a secretary at the front desk and she's like well, yeah, the people that's normally interviewing, they're not here. Um, and so, um, thank you. Mm-hmm. And she was like, but you can fill out application. So we did that. Um, next, the next day, cops was beating my door down, talking about the lady said, you robbed her. Old white lady. Claiming that we robbed her. And we're like, what the, what, what, what the fuck is you talking about? So I'm going to rob you and then write all my shit down on, on a piece of paper. Yeah. Let me take your money. And here's where I live. Here's where I live. Here's, here's my it. address. For you, know what I mean? you came right to my address. Like, I answered the door. I mean, you know what I mean? So, yeah, if you were, you know what I'm saying? You came to me. You think I would be like, damn, uh, open the door? I'd be hiding. Yeah. And even then, I didn't understand the severity of it. But, you know, we went to court. The case was dismissed because she didn't have enough evidence to say we did it. You know, she just... Oh, it was missing after they left. My stuff was missing after they left. But anyway, um, so they dropped the case and all of that. And uh, But I didn't even know the severity because later on, I'm still trying to find a job. And all of a sudden, people start turning me down. They're like, yeah, because you got a criminal record. I'm like, son of a bitch, what are you talking about? 
I ain't never, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, stuff only goes on your record if you go to jail. Yeah. Nope. They was like, nah, it's still there. Because you went, as long as you got accused of it and went to court over it, it's there. That's and it never up. goes away. That's fucked up. So, these days, it's not as bad because it's such an old thing that I think that people, jobs overlook it because it's so old. It was 94. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? But it's really sad that I still have to be branded with that bullshit. Yeah. Because of some shit I didn't, didn't even do. Didn't even do. Yeah. Just got accused of Yeah. So, you know, watch your back, black man. Watch your back. Watch your back. Yep. Watch your back. Yep. So, you know, but I really, you know, our prayers and thoughts go out to victims of this shooting and on any both, other shooting. You know what both, I mean? On both sides. On both sides. On both yeah. sides. Yeah, our yeah, prayers and thoughts go out to both sides because, you know, it's definitely um, victims everywhere. You know what I mean? So, but... It's, it's really sad. If y'all haven't heard about it, you need to go educate yourself on this situation and read the full story so that you can get educated because that's what I'm going to do. You know, check it out. But we just wanted to talk about it so that we can just tell y'all how important situations like this are and how they affect the black community. So, you know, weigh in on it. Go and watch the Lost in Thought. You know what I mean? We've been dropping some stuff. Yep. We dropped the Lost in Thought about that. I did a lyrical breakdown this past weekend yep, yep. on uh, Method Man. So please go check that out. T H O D. Yep. And so then we got another Lost in Thought that you did. What was the other one? Um, um you did the one actually about um, damn, and we can kind of talk about this real quick. Eminem versus Andre Three Thousand. Yeah. My man Kev Yo. Um, I call this man Kev Yo because that's what uh, Karen, the lady that we were raising, playing for. That's what he called him after, a, like a jazz player. So, okay, you know, rest in peace to Karen. So, yeah, um, rest in peace, rest in but, peace. But um, yeah. So, what do you feel about that? We can just talk about it real quick. I um, mean, I think that you know Eminem is a superb lyricist, but I do think that. Andre 3000 would have a slight edge over him, you know, and I've been pretty vocal about that um, on our Facebook page. I think we talked about it. So I think it would be a great matchup. I think, um, but, you know, as far as lyricism and just cadence and flow, I think Andre would just have a slight advantage and he might come out the victor. Now, Eminem may have more endurance. Eminem can do a lot better with probably freestyling off the top of the head. So even if the ran out of written stuff, he'd probably be able to just still keep rapping because you, you can just throw a topic at him and just say, Duracell battery. And he'd be like, battery, you want to shatter me? I might punch you in your back and see your acne. You know, he yeah. one of he's good at that. So he's, he's just good off the top. And so, but I think that Andre would have the slight advantage. You know what I mean? That's my opinion. Um, Andre 3000 is, is just... He one of the best out there. He's just one of the best. You can't deny him. And so he's proven that year after year. So, um, and I know you feel like pretty much the same, I'm assuming. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it could go either way, I feel. Um, but I think Andre got a slight advantage. I mean, if you, um, now the only thing I will, I will, I will look at it like this. You got people that say Eminem's overrated and whatnot. You have some people that you do have some Eminem haters. Um, you also have, you know, like he can't, you know, he's talented, but he's not that great. On Outkast, I mean, and I got to look at Outkast as a whole. Um, you don't really hear people too much saying bad things about outcasts. Right, right. You don't really see, even like them, you know, doing the, uh, when they did uh, Speaker Box and the Love Below, Love Split Below, Nose, yeah. mm-hmm. people enjoyed those albums. I mean, those basically like solo projects. Yeah. Um, I, I remember, I was really confused at first. I was like, mm-hmm. so they're doing kind of two separate, but then they put them in one. But then after, after it dropped, I kind of got it. I was yeah. like, okay, sometimes one person is on a certain energy level and another person is on another so they might not mesh together on a combination album per se so but we got a lot of songs so let me do my joint you do yours and we put it as a double album yep it made sense after that I got it you yeah know I, mean? I think I think on a creative level I think Andre's a little bit more creative yeah I think that's that's one of the advantages that I think he has over Eminem Eminem not saying that he does the same thing mm-hmm. I mean I think even like 
you know, they kind of talked about like revival. Yeah. That's like what he was trying to do, but people didn't want that. But I think the problem with that is everybody was, you know what I'm saying? He's been doing a certain thing for so long. Yeah. It's kind of like it's been kind of, uh, you know what I'm saying, repetitive. But I mean, on, you know, Andre and them, and they have always done like, you know, they have always done, um, like their albums, they got, it's always been, they have always elevated. It's always been something different. Like the first album, you know, you had the funk. Second album had a little bit of the funk and, yeah. you, know, the, you know, the boom bap. The third album was kind of like, the, the fourth album just was crazy. Like, yeah. it shit went all over the place. Right, right. And then like your fifth album, you know what I'm saying? You had, you know, you had the, um, you know what I'm saying? Like all this, like you said, this, the, the, uh, you know, Andre solo stuff and Big Boy solo right. stuff. And then too, just to say, let's say if they did battle like with Andre, if Andre brought in Big Boy and then Eminem might be in trouble too because Andre said himself that mm-hmm. I wouldn't battle Big Boy. Yeah. Yeah, so, Big Boy is nice, yeah. man. Um, and I think they're both, you know, just as nice as one another. Um, because I think on a personal level, I like Andre a little bit better. But I do think Big Boy is a close right behind. Yeah, they blend. They so blend, they blend so good together. Yeah, that's what's dope about them. They can do separate projects, but then they can come back and mesh together like like nobody's business. So it's 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 a very unique situation. Um, you know who reminds me a lot of them is that new group Earth Gang. Yeah, they uh, remind me a lot of them, and they out of the ATL too. So yeah, you know, yeah. not saying that they're trying to be the next Outcast, but they have a similar. You know, you can tell their mind state is a little bit similar. So um, oh, I'm sorry, my man Jamal. What up, Jamal? JC. What up? What up, man? What up? Oh man, my damn buttons. Hold on, we got to get back in because I'm a boy from day one at Job Corps. <laughs> yes, sir. What up, man? Checking us out, checking us out, checking us yes, out. Sir, we appreciate it. We wrapping up. Um, you know, we were just talking about the shooting in New Jersey and um, how that affects you know black people in general because you know sometimes they uh, you know try to make it a, a black thing more so than a, just you know a bad situation. You know what I mean? So you know they they and then we're talking about um, now we're talking about the Andre three thousand. Uh, versus Eminem, the thing that Waka Flocka brought up, saying that Andre could out-rap um, Eminem, and you know, we kind of agree with him, yeah. but only by slightly, you know, I think yeah, it, I, I think I, it would I, be a tough one, but I think Andre would come out at the Yeah, I think it would, I, and I think it would be, it would definitely been a exciting uh, something to see. Right. I mean, this is something that I would do pay-per-view. Yeah. Definitely. Hey, if you can get rappers out of their ego, man, a pay-per-view event would be so fucking dope. You, you. I mean, I could put some shit together. I got, I, I, man, I've been dreaming about that for years. Like, oh, you know, man. I know, you know, how we could mesh it all together and make it happen and, you know, make it like the whole uh, 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 Keith Murray versus Fredro thing. Yeah, you know, man. Pay-per-view. Yeah, man. We all we gotta do rent out the Coliseum over here at Greensboro, Man. and then I just got my cheese crackers, my little <laughs> tiny wines. Everybody be drinking on that. My man M could come up now, and then the Andre, you know what that, you know, ain't right. nobody, and they be killing it. You exactly. Know what I'm nobody don't get hurt. You know? Exactly. Well, I mean, it's a lot of ego involved, so a lot of rappers feel like you know I'm too good to battle, or. I think some of them feel like their reputation might be a little tarnished if they lose. You know what I mean? Like, everybody knows me as such and such, so if I lose, they ain't going to respect me no more. Nah, it ain't even like that. Nah, I I think you explain the rules. Yeah. You say, like, hey, this is just the battle. Everything. I mean, because really now, nah, I don't think it it wouldn't affect you. I mean, we're in the era of, like, you know, you got ghost riders on your shit and you'd be all right. Yeah. Not, you know... You know, I'm not mean, hating, but I mean, it just is what it is. Right. And I mean, you know, if you if you kind of make it like a wild and out type of thing with Nick Cannon, you know, and let people know this is all for fun. You know what I mean? We might, you know, you might get some disses thrown at you, but it's all for fun and you're not really sensitive. Like, uh, what's your girl name? I got up there and was crying about it. Uh, uh, um, um, Damn. Man, what was her name? Who? 
the the wannabe rapper girl. She got up there. Oh, Iggy. And, it, not Iggy Azalea. Azalea Banks. Oh yeah, 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 Azalea yeah, yeah, Banks, yeah, 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 yeah. Got up there, and you know, you know what the fuck it is. You know, and they start throwing some insults at her, and all of a sudden, <laughs> why would you say that about me? I can't believe you would just throw insults at me like that. I thought this was a wholesome church show. Like, nah. What you think you came in for? Nah, you came in here to hear. You know what I'm saying? Came here, here the bang. Yeah, and I mean, you know, and, and Nick Cannon and them know how it is up there. He yeah. even said, you know, if, if Eminem agreed to come on the show, he would probably kill us all, but it was still being fun. He already oh, yeah. know. Oh, they already know. I mean, yeah. so it's like you go in there prepared that hey, it's all in fun. Whatever happens, happens. Red Man been on there. He killed it. You know what I mean? That was nah, dope. Nah, nobody ain't fucking with Red yeah, Man. Yeah, <laughs> Red Man. Can <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I'm about to tell you. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention. But um, so our uh, feed for Instagram dropped off. So uh, fuck. Yeah. Nah, I ain't gonna do that. We like Instagram, Instagram bad, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. We like Instagram. So yeah. you know, it is what it is, man. You know, it, we will we'll, uh, fix that later. But anyway, um, but yeah, um, so that's that's my feeling on the. Eminem and Three Stacks join. You know, I think Andre would win just slightly. Um, but it would be a great match. And it would be dope if we did have some kind of rap Olympics. You know what I mean? Um, you know, anything. You know what I mean? Where you have, like, you can have different um, kind of contests. You know, have contests on strictly lyricism. You know what I mean? Yeah. Have, have contests on... You know, uh, talking about women in your rap. You know, like, you know, the smooth talk. You know what I mean? You can have different types of content. Food. Yeah, food. You know what yeah. I mean? Uh, all that kind of stuff, man. Yeah. So, it, 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 you know, you can have your typical rap battle where you just throw jabs and metaphors at each other to see who better at that. You know what I mean? It could be, it ain't got to be all, all one one thing. You know what I mean? It could be really like a rap Olympics. You know what I mean? Because there's a lot of stuff out there. You know, who's better at, you know, the fast flow. You know, oh my God, if we had a fast flow category. Yeah, I can see Tech Nine. Man, listen. The sex is good. You get Tech Nine in there. Yeah, you get Buster in Twister. there. Twister in there. Eminem can do that one. Yeah. He's done that. I don't think Eminem will win that. You know what I mean? He's good, but he's not that good. Yeah. He can hang with them. Um, you know, so, you know, and you got a lot of people who can do that flow. You know, you get Bone Thugs and yeah. people like that, man. Listen. Come on, we can do this rap, hip hop. Come on now, let's. If y'all, if it happened, y'all know you heard it here first. You heard it here first. Give me ideas. So, there's, there's some there's some hip hop talent scouts that's watching our page right now. Like I'm gonna steal that idea and I'm gonna go to Def Jam and tell Russell or tell somebody to do it and they ain't gonna give us no credit. You know what I mean? So, just remember, you heard it here first. First. Rap Olympics. Rap Olympics. So, but um, I think that's pretty much all our topics for the day. Did you have anything else you wanted to throw in there? Nah, man. Oh, real quick, I will say this. Remember, add more members, subscribers YouTube. to our YouTube. Yep. Whoever do the most, putting in the most work. Yeah. Your boy, if you got cash out, it's going to drop you. Hundred dollars in cash out. Hundred dollars. We need y'all help. So show us y'all appreciate us. We'll appreciate you. And we too. do appreciate y'all. Everybody that listened to us today. Yeah. And listen to us, you know. And um, we won't have a show uh, next Tuesday, but it will be Thursday. I'll be kind of like our Christmas show. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna do some Thursday after Christmas, um, earlier in the day, um, so that you know uh, we can have some time with our families and all of that good stuff. So, and don't forget, as always, like, yep. share, yep. subscribe. Yep. Like, share, subscribe. Brothers and sisters. Like, brothers and sisters. Share, subscribe. Brothers and sisters. Let's do it. I had to do that for my man. <laughs> I had to do that for uh, U- uh, Umar Johnson. Yeah. Well, actually, he did real quick. He was like on uh, uh, 
uh, recently on uh, the Breakfast Club. Look like he lost oh, yeah? some weight. I didn't even know. Yeah. I, I got to get back into the Breakfast Club because I only catch like clips on YouTube. I don't really watch the show as, as religiously um, as I used to, but I, I think they do a good show. It just normally when it comes on, um, I'm just not available, so I normally yeah. just catch a, a clip of it or, yeah. or a replay or something like that. If I see if somebody I want to, you know, you know, see up there, because um, a lot of times if it's somebody, I'm like, uh, I don't really care to hear what they got to say. I let it go. But you know, shout out to the Breakfast Club anyway. You know, we 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 glad y'all doing your thing. Yep, yep. But um, all right. So I guess we can sign it off, man. Yep, uh, yep. For episode one hundred and two. Yes, sir. Try it, hip hop podcast. This your boy Kurt, and this is Howie. And we're gonna see y'all on the next go round. Peace. Peace.